It's a crazy little powerhouse. Welcome Xperia 5 Mark IV. I honestly didn't know if we were gonna get one of these. Last year, we got a tease of the 5 Mark III during the announcement of the 1 Mark III. This year, during the announcement for the 1 Mark IV, no word at all on a potential 5 Mark IV, but it's here now, and jumping right into the design, this is one of my favorite builds of the year. It's a little smaller, definitely a little narrower, but it's still pretty tall, which is great for those vertically scrolling apps. You get more information on your screen. And of course, cinema-wide movies. The major improvement, the 5 now has the flat sides like the 1 series phones. This is so much easier to hold on to. Now, especially when you're trying to use it like a camera, and we get a bit better tactile shape around the power button fingerprint sensor and the dedicated shutter button. Both of these hardware bits are terrific. This is one of the best biometric unlocks I've used this year. And when you really want to shoot some photos, having this two-stage shutter, super handy. No more curves or tapers. The 5 is just as much a rectangular monolith as the 1 series is, and I'm here for it. Even for the design refresh, we keep all the fan favorites. The headphone jack is right where it should be. And of course, we've got this bottom-mounted memory card and SIM tray that you can open without a pin tool. The 5 Mark IV now packs a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and in a first for the 5 series, wireless charging is included with reverse wireless charging when your Galaxy S22 or iPhone SE friends need a quick top off. The main difference from the 1 series, we of course stepped down to a 1080p display, but with that 120 hertz high refresh, all the geeks are super into now. And the Xperia 5 only has 128 gig of storage compared to the Xperia 1 Mark IV's 512 gig of storage. But of course, we do have that memory card slot for media, takes almost all of the sting out of that base level. And the telephoto camera on the 5 does not have the zooming, moving optics of the Xperia 1 Mark IV. This telephoto instead is locked at a very portrait flattering 60 millimeters or roughly a two and a half time zoom. For those small compromises, the price of the 5 is more wallet friendly, $9.99 against the 1 Mark IV at $1,600. MSRP, we're neck and neck with a Galaxy S22 Plus. A 50 bucks more can get you the Galaxy with 250 gigs of storage, but I wonder how much space I can get for $50 on a really nice memory card. Hmm. The Sony differentiating features are on terrific display here. Sony paved the way for advanced power management features, better charging modes, putting a limit on how high you can charge it, and of course, HS power control, where you can largely bypass the battery when the phone is plugged in. That helps the phone run cooler under heavier load, like gaming. It really should be a feature on all premium phones, but you really only see it here and on a few other gaming phones. Speaking of, the Game Enhancer includes all the granular performance and screen adjustment options you'd want to dig into, including black frame insertion for crisper gameplay at 240 hertz. You can now use the Xperia with a capture card or HDMI adapter for game streaming. The phone can be your modem to stream from another console, like you could game on the go, Maybe use your Steam Deck for a mobile remote game stream. The external monitor app is included so you can turn the phone into a display for a camera and also live stream directly through that monitor interface. And I finally get to play with the Music Pro app. It's really nice getting a first party audio recording and editing tool on a device like this. So many folks might carry a laptop to record singer songwriter performances or podcasts. Your phone is plenty powerful to tackle that kind of audio production on the go. The camera conversation is very similar to the Xperia 1, and here Sony is not going for the biggest sensors with the shallowest depth of field. Sony is going harder on video. All three rear sensors are fast readout, faster bursts of photos, faster eye tracking autofocus, and up to 120 frame per second 4K video. Incredibly fluid video, or you've got a built-in slow motion at much higher resolution. But if you can drop down to 4K 30, you can seamlessly zoom across all three sensors in one take of video. The most pedantic of you in my comments will mention that you can kind of see when the camera shifts to a different sensor. Now that you've pointed that out, I'd like you to try and zoom across all three sensors 
on a galaxy without having to stop the recording, switch cameras, and restart the recording. Because that's what seamless means. You see, the camera nuance matters. If you've watched any of my videos and ranting, I don't believe in a one-size-fits-all solution, and I think most folks probably have the wrong phone for their needs. A Sony is a very specific kind of camera. Maybe the most specific phone camera you can get. Where I adore the photographic look on the Sony sensor in a Xiaomi 12S Ultra, I would lean towards the Xperia's for more action-oriented photography and better control over high-resolution slow-motion footage. If you want to trust a camera to nail the critical focus on a soccer player's eye from a telephoto lens, and know you're getting the exact moment you hit the shutter, and Xperia is the best choice to handle that. Just your regular reminder, there is no one scoring of gooder and badder for cameras. It's all a balance of different pros and cons. It really is worth it to look at your phone, look at the kinds of photos and videos that you like to take, and maybe try a different phone that focuses on those specific features. Checking out a Sony, you're in really good shape if you're interested in action, in high frame rate video, and if you're curious about live streaming or game streaming. The Xperia 5 Mark IV is easily the best example of this Xperia strategy we've seen from Sony yet. The redesign helps catch the 5 Series up to the lifestyle features we enjoy on the Xperia 1. The shape is more ergonomic for real world use. And best of all, the announcement to shipping window is the best we've seen yet from Sony. Expecting this phone to arrive in consumers' hands in early October. So much better than last year. You know, we're not going to announce the phone and then wait like four months to really ship the phone. These are all the practical perks and a nice bit of evolution for a boutique solution. Buying an unlocked phone in the United States you're making an effort to find the right fit gadget for your needs outside just lazily shopping at a carrier store. It's a more discerning purchase. No one casually or accidentally just ends up with an Xperia. Oops, I tripped and a thousand dollars fell out of my pocket at Sammy's cameras and now I just have this phone. For all these improvements to the distribution, the better design and the new features, there still is a small timing concern for some Sony this year. When we talk about performance, the Xperia 5 is running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, not the newer 8 Plus Gen 1. In my testing, the refreshed 8 Plus does deliver some power efficiency improvements over the chip that shipped at the beginning of the year. This is kind of tricky to break down and compare. If we just put an Xperia 5 Mark IV up against the Galaxy S22 Plus, my performance testing almost completely favors the Xperia and the Xperia will get slightly better daily battery life in most oranges to oranges comparisons. There are a couple phones out now in the United States though that are starting to include the 8 Plus Gen 1 like the OnePlus 10T. Not a level playing field though. The OnePlus is going to behave a little bit better for heavy compute tasks, but it's not gonna have the fun camera features or the display and live streaming features or the power management options or any of the things that make a Sony a Sony. To get a better handle on what this looks like, I'm going to be putting out a standalone torture test video on the Xperia comparing it against another 8 Gen 1, an 8 Plus Gen 1, and a Google Tensor in some video recording tests. Outdoors in high 90 degree heat and indoors in more controlled situations. What I can kind of spoil here, I don't believe there are problems with the Sony thermal design, but we have to be realistic in what Sony is trying to do. It's really not enough for a reviewer to say, I pushed record and then I got a thermal warning. From a professional standpoint, that's a good thing. A casual consumer is probably fine with dropped frames and stuttery moments in a video. I've got a bunch of phones sitting here in front of me that look great for video recording tests and they seem to run forever compared to an Xperia. But when I go back and I look at the clips, they can often be a mess. Stuttery moments, dropped frames. And Xperia is significantly more conservative at handling thermal issues, warns a lot sooner than other phones, and it will shut off clips before other phones, but I never see 
wrecked stuttery footage that I can't use in my finished videos. This is why we need more level-headed discussions and more consistent testing. It's not enough to say, oh no, there's a limit. We need to know what that limit is. I totally know there are people out there that want to have long takes of video footage. You want to record your kid's whole soccer game in 1080p in one clip. And shooting in summer heat on an Xperia is not going to be the right fit for them. The vast majority of my shooting is in small bursts, and with moments to recover, the Xperia hasn't really presented me with many compromises for how I make YouTube and family videos. I'll, of course, break down my findings in more detail in that future video, so stay tuned. But because of Qualcomm's SoC shenanigans, this year is a little weird for phones and performance in general, but the Xperia 5 Mark IV still holds on to one strategic idea. For folks who enjoy Sony features and want to support a device that still has lifestyle options like headphone jacks and memory card slots, this is the only game in town. It's a proper premium device with a ton of functionality over a Galaxy or an iPhone, and now you can get all of that in a package that's a little easier on the wallet. I will certainly have more to say on the Xperia 5 Mark IV in a few upcoming videos. Uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed and smashing bell icons to get those notifications when those videos drop. And I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on this little mighty mouse phone. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been incredible. Those of you who are catching the links in the descriptions, if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, shopping a little merch, or joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.